Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of The Space Between. My name is Zach Eichels, and today we're joined by Joel Cohen. Joel, how are you doing? Good, Zach. Joel is with the Sea Turtle Preservation Society, and we're very thankful that he's here. So, first question. Tell us a bit about your organization and what you do. Sure. So, we are the Sea Turtle Preservation Society. We're a 501c3 nonprofit, and our mission is very simple. It's summed up in one easy-to-remember sentence, which is helping sea turtles survive. Okay. While that sounds uh, simple, it's, it covers a lot of uh, programs that we do uh, in Brevard County, uh, including stranding and salvage. We are one of the only groups in the county to respond to injured or dead sea turtles. So uh, we get trained uh, annually and there's state permits to handle all that. Uh, so that uh, we can respond to all the turtles that have needs here. We also have nesting surveys we do in Cocoa Beach where we catalog every single crawl, whether it's a false crawl or a nest. We mark 20% of those nests so they can be researched later. Uh, we also do a, a whole lot of education. That's our main focus is educating the public on the nuances of living, recreating, uh, working uh, in an area that holds a whole lot of sea turtles. We're, we're vital to the world sea turtle population of our county is. So wow. our main goal, yeah, it's, uh, we can get into numbers shortly, but uh, our main goal is, is we're, we're at the friction point where the rubber meets the road, where there's a lot of people and a lot of sea turtles and we're growing. So our organization's goal is to educate the growing number of people about where they live and what's here. So we do that with night walks. We take people to see nesting moms. We do that with uh, educational presentations. Uh, to schools or local uh, places like this. Uh, we do a bunch of outreach directly through teachers. We give them turtle trunks where they can actually uh, get curriculum and educate the, the, the students. Uh, so we do a whole bunch of things to help sea turtles survive. Wow. Very cool. So when does sea turtle season begin and how long does it go for? Great question. So you'll hear a lot of dates uh, for when sea turtle season is, but Sea turtle season really is when the first sea turtle shows up on the beach each season to lay eggs. And that is happening earlier and earlier. We're seeing uh, leatherback starting to come up in February. Wow. So technically sea turtle season is this year, or the last several years, February through till the last turtle, which can be November, believe it or not. They, okay. they, they, are, uh, they have a long season. Most of the year. Yeah, the, the lighting ordinance, the, the, the one that's called sea turtle season often is really the lighting ordinance. And depending where you are, uh, in Brevard County, the lighting ordinance is from May 1st through October 31st. But obviously that misses the first couple of months. So Satellite Beach, I believe Cape Canaveral uh, have their own lighting ordinances, which are better, which I believe start uh, March 1st. So generally, what species of sea turtle nest along the beaches of Cape Canaveral? Yes, yeah, so we are in Sea Turtle Central, and it's a very interesting place, Cape Canaveral, because uh, so so when we talk about sea turtle nesting numbers, we talk about Brevard County. But uh, if you live here or, or just visit here, you can see there's a lot of people here, uh, Cocoa Beach up to Port Canaveral, and then north of Port Canaveral, where we have the uh, Canaveral National Seashore, we have much higher nesting numbers. We have, uh, they have over 5,000 nests already this year, just on the, on the Canaveral National Seashore. So it's really interesting to see where all the, the people and the turtles all exist in the same place. And um, all species of sea turtle that are in our waters. So generally, what species of sea turtles nest along the beaches of Cape Canaveral? Yes, so in the world, there's only seven species of sea turtles. We have five of those species in our waters, uh, meaning they, they either migrate or live in our, in our uh, coastal waters, either in the lagoon or, or around uh, in the reefs. And four of those species regularly nest. Loggerheads are our number one nesting uh, turtle. Greens are rapidly uh, catching up. Uh, leatherbacks and Kemp's Ridleys so those are the four. We used to have hawksbill turtles. Uh, they've dropped off and haven't been spotted in years. But yeah, four to five species nest uh, regularly on our beaches. So by extension, I'm guessing Brevard County is considered a hot spot for sea turtle nesting. Yes, absolutely. Uh, Brevard County sees, last year we had the highest number of loggerhead uh, 
nesting in the entire state wow. and really in the United States and the world. Uh, if you were to take all the counties, Brevard County and go the four counties south, those numbers are the highest aggregation of nesting sea turtles in the entire world. Wow. And our county leads the way of those five counties. So it's very important to the global population of all the sea turtle species. That's incredible. Um, what are some things residents and visitors can do to limit their impacts on nesting? Sure, so our biggest problems uh, with all the outreach and conservation we've done is still the human problem, unfortunately. Uh, but we have a lot of new people coming here. We have a lot of people visiting here that don't understand uh, the, the needs that sea turtles have. And the simple thing is having your cell phone light on at night is horrible for sea turtles. Mm -hmm. So uh, it's, it's very well known, it's very well researched. If you have a cell phone light on, it can deter moms from nesting. So if a mom coming up to nest sees a light, she can easily turn around. And then what's really bad, what's really been a, a growing problem is disoriented hatchlings. So hatchlings are the little baby turtles that come out of the nest when they're ready to emerge. So after they incubate 45 to 60 days later, if everything goes properly, they crawl up out of the, their, their nest and they would go typically straight to the ocean. But a light on, disorients them and then they, they get misoriented and crawl towards that light thinking that's where they're supposed to go and then they're on the beach longer, they'll crawl north, south or uh, west uh, everywhere but the ocean. They're open to more predators and they also, this is what started our organization was was realizing the effects human have humans have on nesting turtles. Uh, our organization was founded because of loggerhead sea turtle hatchlings that were crawling on, the, on A1A and getting run over by cars because they were crawling towards the light. That's still a problem. We still have people every night that come down on the beach with a cell phone or a red light. All light is bad for sea turtles. It's actually illegal. That's what the ordinance is. All light is illegal. Red light, white light. You're not, to have, not allowed to have any light on the beach artificial because it negatively impacts turtles. And we know this uh, without a doubt that it negatively impacts turtles. So what should someone do if they come across a nesting sea turtle or a sea turtle nest or even baby sea turtles? Sure, so there's a lot of normal things you're gonna come, come up, uh, upon that, that you don't have to do anything on, about. Uh, early in the morning, you may see green turtles finishing up. They take a long time to nest. They can be anywhere from two hours to five hours to do their entire process. They're the ones that dig the big giant holes in the beach. Uh, so they can be, uh, they can be on the beach early in the morning just finishing nesting, and that's not a reason to be worried. You can just stand back and enjoy it. Same thing with hatchlings early in the morning. It's typically the coolest part of the day. You'll see a lot of hatchlings emerging and running down to the ocean. As long as they're running, crawling down to the ocean, they're gonna, it, it looks horrible because they gotta crawl all over the footprints and the holes, but you don't wanna touch them. That's normal, they're, they're, they're doing a normal thing. If you have hatchlings not going towards the ocean, or say they're getting predated by birds, or a dog, you see a dog digging a nest up, this happens every year also, dogs dig nests up, off-leash dogs, then you wanna call our hotline. If you see a turtle stuck, we have a lot of turtles the last two years getting stuck in dune crossovers. Uh, so the steps that go over the dunes, which are very important, because we don't wanna walk on the dunes, they're very vital to many things, including turtles, but we've had turtles stuck in there Last year, unfortunately, uh, we had a stuck turtle, a mom there until 11.30 in, in the morning, and uh, she didn't make it because the heat was just too much heat for her. So if you see a turtle stuck, uh, unable to crawl on their own, uh, or wrapped in fishing gear, or anything that looks not uh, normal, then please call our hotline. Uh, and in Brevard County, that is 321-206-0646. We are the people that respond to sea turtle uh, issues in Brevard County. So uh, call our hotline, leave a message, leave the location, the street location. Please don't say I'm at the 7-Eleven across from Publix. There's a 7-Eleven across from Publix and, and, and multiple places in each city. So give an address, try to give a clear uh, explanation and give your phone number so we can call you right back, which someone will usually call you back within a few minutes. That's really good information. So where can individuals go to find out more about the Sea Turtle Preservation Society and just sea turtles in general if they want? Sure, so uh, our website is a great place to start, very simple. It's seaturtlespacecoast.org. Uh, 
Uh, it's loaded with articles and information from laws to sea turtle research. Uh, we've, we've been around since the 80s, so we have a lot of stuff from previous seasons that's very interesting. Uh, we also are on social media. We have our Facebook page, sea, uh, uh, sea Turtle PS for Sea Turtle Preservation Society. Same on Instagram, same on YouTube. Uh, we also have a, we have two stores, two locations locally. We have one at Port Canaveral, uh, and then we and it's called the Turtle Nest. It's a small kiosk with a lot of cool turtle stuff in it and life size uh, skele uh, skeleton. And then we have a brand new education center. We're very happy with and proud of, and want to get the community to come visit. And that is at our Indy Atlantic location, which is 111 South Miramar Ave, Indy Atlantic, Florida, 32903. We have life-size uh, turtle models, we have skeletons, we have videos, we have the nesting process at night. We have a mom nesting at night that we did a whole video on explaining each, each uh, behavioral process of that. Uh, we have uh, interactive games for kids. We have a nesting model. We have a nest, an actual nest model inside of a, 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 the, whole, the whole nesting cycle model. So it's a great place to come and it's a family place uh, to learn all about sea turtles and we're proud and happy to that we just we just finished that very cool that's awesome well thank you so much joel um i think we're looking forward to you coming to a future friday fest yes in august yes okay very cool um well with that everyone thank you so much for joining and we'll see you next time on the space between